All right. Um, good evening, everybody. I'm Jenica Davis Hockett, and this is the third in the small or in the Good News in Youth Ministry series. This is small group ministry for advisors and other adult allies. So tonight I'm going to give you um, some reasons for starting a small group ministry and reasons that will be worth your while. And then I'll give you the nuts and bolts of how to start a small group ministry. And then we're going to take a small risk together towards the end of the evening and actually switch over to another platform to experience small group ministry as this group. So that'll help you get uh, a sense of why even virtually, even if we can't be together in person, small group ministry is a really powerful medium for helping people make meaningful connections and get support. So with that, I'm going to take my camera off so that you guys can focus just on the slides and then you'll be able to uh, all have your video, all have your cameras on when we switch over to the other platform. So like I said, I'm Jenica Davis Hockett, your Pacific Western Regional Youth Ministry Specialist. And I'm a resource for religious educators and advisors and youth leaders as they guide Unitarian Universalist youth in identity and faith formation. And I began my career in youth ministry in 2008 as an advisor at the First Unitarian Church of Salt Lake City. So this idea of getting support for advisors is really close to my heart. My personal vision uh, is that every Unitarian Universalist youth has a dependable support network that acknowledges their inherent worth and dignity and fosters their potential as spiritual leaders and that every Unitarian Universalist adult in that network has the wisdom, the compassion, and the support to meet that call. So we like to start each of our webinars with a chalice lighting, just as you would any small group ministry. So tonight's chalice lighting is by Albert Schweitzer. At times, our own light goes out and is rekindled by a spark from another person. Each of us has cause to think with deep gratitude of those who have lighted the flame within us. So the reason that I wanted to put this small group ministry for advisors and other adults and youth ministry uh, model together is as a response to hearing advisors tell me that they felt under supported in their role. And they didn't really place blame on anyone and, and none is needed. They were just acknowledging that advising is a really huge role. And they wished there was a network out there for mutual support. And they wanted to talk about youth ministry, but they also wanted to process what they were learning about themselves as they accompanied youth on a spiritual journey. So this model is about creating a network of adults in youth ministry who can turn to each other for support, both about and outside youth ministry. It's also about creating a place where advisors' spiritual needs can be met so they can contribute to the spiritual transformation of youth. So here's how it works. High school and middle school advisors and other adults in youth ministry, and that could be religious educators, RE council members, OWL facilitators, coming of age mentors, youth ministry coordinators or con sponsors, parents, any anyone that's related to youth ministry uh, would gather together from neighboring Unitarian Universalist congregations or as they call it in some districts, clusters of congregations for a monthly one hour session to discuss topics that help them deepen their own spiritual maturity. So the ideal group has around five to 10 members if you're gonna do a small group ministry online, or you could have up to 14 members if you uh, did in-person meetings. There's a facilitator or co-facilitator to use a series of small group ministry sessions that you can find online and a coordinator who brings it all together. So in this model, we're beginning to weave a web of support to help advisors in their ministry and to deepen their own spirituality through building meaningful connections and uh, through deep discussion. So here's the plan for tonight. We're gonna, I'm gonna share with you some reasons that we need small group ministry for our advisors and other adults in youth ministry. 
And I'll show you the different people that you'll need to start that small group. And this, this small group ministry is a chance for you to reach beyond your own congregation's walls to meet folks in similar positions in different parts of your district. And then I'll show you some resources that are available on the Mountain Desert District website that you can, uh, that can help you get started. And like I said, I think it's important to practice what I preach. So I want to introduce you to the power of online small group ministry at the end of this session. So this webinar on any meeting is designed, the platform is designed to be informative and it's less interactive in nature. So we're gonna switch over to an app called Zoom towards the end of the call. And I'll walk you through all the steps and Lori will be here to support you as well to switch over to this other platform. So I think this is going to be a fun experiment to see what it's like uh, to try out a new app and a new way of being together. So why small group ministry? The first reason to start a small group ministry is that adults in youth ministry have spiritual needs and a desire to connect too. You can see in Maslow's hierarchy of needs that there's much more to living a fulfilled life than just having our very basic physiological uh, and safety needs met. Small group ministry can be a place where friendships are built and where beloved community can be actualized. And you as advisors and, and DREs and ministers, you, you work hard to make sure that each person in youth group feels like they belong and like they are honored. But it's not really a space for you to get to be as vulnerable as you may sometimes feel. And small group ministry is a time where you get to quiet your mind and open your heart. And it's a chance to step out of the swift flow of our society for an hour to connect to your authentic self and to feel that great sense of generosity that comes when you get to accept others for their authentic and vulnerable selves as well. Have you ever felt like the DRE or the parents or the minister or even the youth have a little more faith in you, that you than you have in yourself? I know I, I certainly did as an advisor often. And belonging to a like-hearted community where you can bounce ideas around and get support and suggestions when you're struggling can really improve your, your own faith in yourself or your self-esteem. Congregations are hungry for self-actualized advisors. Youth are hungry for self-actualized advisors. And we'll talk more about self-actualization in a minute. So why did you get into youth ministry? Meeting with other advisors in, in a spiritual context, not in a planning or organizing context, reminds you why you got into youth ministry in the first place. This is not a job, it is a journey. And the administrative side of advising can take a lot of attention and energy, yes, but it's not the most, uh, it's not the most important element. Your spiritual growth is as important as the youth that you work with. We got into ministry to help youth heal their brokenness, to create a safe space where youth can help each other towards wholeness. We got into youth ministry to explore and discover spiritual practices with youth to help them gain resilience in the face of this complex world. We got into youth ministry to make sure that youth have a place to contribute to a just world. And we got into youth ministry to support a consistent, grounded place for youth to be spiritual beings. Being in small group ministry with adults gives you a chance to practice the power of community and facilitation, deep listening and transformation in an environment that's unique to your needs so that you can more easily exercise those elements in your youth group. It can help you go deeper into your own reasons for getting into youth ministry and learn more about your own calling as a spiritual mentor. Advisors with a solid spiritual grounding are equipped to guide youth in spiritual transformation. 
So to be a, a mentor or a spiritual guide for youth, you have to be spiritually mature. Your spiritual needs for service and being part of a learning community can be met in youth group. But, but as an adult, you have a different level, a different set of spiritual needs. In small group ministry, you can find new spiritual practices that you can then teach from experience to your youth group. So in the Tapestry of Faith curriculum, uh, eight spheres of spiritual growth are, are outlined. And I um, am going to send you the resource for that curriculum so you don't have to worry about writing it down now. I won't go into detail tonight, but just so that you can see what they are and see how you could go deep with each of these in small group ministry, here they are. So there's personal spiritual practice, and that's about going internal. And there are justice practices. That's about making a difference in the world. There's communal worship or being with others in spirit and spiritual friendships, knowing people who can tell you what you need to hear, even if it's hard to hear. There are soul practices. And this is basically just about having fun, being creative, letting loose, and mind practices. This is continuing education and uh, a depth of learning so that you can see if your uh, opinions, ideas, values can expand and grow. There are also body practices, and these are the things that help you get out of your head, and life practices living a mindful life. And I use the fish here from the video, Life is Water, which is based on a speech by David Foster Wallace about choosing to live life mindfully. This could be a good topic for a small group ministry session. Um, in small group ministry, you can get answers to deep theological questions that will help you to teach and guide your own youth group. And the especially cool thing is that we don't even have to be in the same zip code or even the same state as others to do these practices. While the body practice might be a, a challenge virtually, but the other practices can easily be incorporated into a small group ministry online. We no longer have to be together to be with one another. And that's what we're going to try later tonight. So who are the people that you'll need to start the small group ministry. The first step is to gather the people and identify their roles that you'll need them to fill. So everyone who joins your small group ministry will play an important part. The first is the coordinator, or you can split this job between two people if they work well together as a team. So the role of the coordinator is to generate interest and excitement about small group ministry through promotion and to gather the contact information of participants. And they will help to, uh, they'll help the group to decide which day of the month will work best for them to meet. So beyond the promotional materials provided on the website that I'm gonna show you in a minute, you can get re really creative with it. Think of the millions of hokey and fabulous ways that youth ask each other to prom or homecoming. And since you're inviting folks into an intimate form of community, personalize the ads so that they get a real sense that this is an organic and a truly human experience. So your coordinators need to be someone or a few people who embody a welcoming spirit and know how to reach out to people to invite them in. So based on who signs up, the coordinators will identify facilitators to give them the contact information for their group members. Once the promotion components are finished, the coordinators become a supporting role for the facilitators, providing encouragement and asking how they can help facilitate with, uh, or help, help the facilitators with any organization. So the role of the coordinator takes about two hours a week in the initial stages for the promoting. And uh, establishing the small group ministry. And then really it's just about two hours a month after that to keep in touch with the facilitators. So like I said earlier, a group size of about five to 10 people for an online meeting or up to 14 people uh, if they're meeting in person is about the right size. That way, if a couple of people can't make it on any given night, then the group size can still maintain a vital energy. 
And I say a smaller group online just because when you're figuring out how to communicate with your webcam, with uh, all the, the chat possibilities, it's easier to figure out your social norms when there's less people than if you're meeting in person where we already know the social norms of uh, how to be together. So the role of the facilitator is to coordinate and facilitate the group once a month using the sessions that you can find online, and I'll show you those in a minute, or you can make them up. You can pull YouTube videos, TED Talks um, that are inspirational and uh, come up with a couple of key questions, an opening and a closing, and that, that's, that could be your small group ministry session. It's important that the facilitators can be part of another small group ministry as a participant so they can get the full benefit of being, being in small group ministry. So part of the facilitator's role is to be able to empathize uh, with the participants to see what it's like to be a participant. And also, as a facilitator, you don't necessarily um, get the full benefit. Just as, as an advisor, you don't necessarily get the full benefit of youth ministry because you have to be one step removed. So this role is likely to take an hour a week in the beginning as they get situated and coordinate with their members and then about two and a half hours a month after that, one for their own small group ministry, one to facilitate their group ministry, and then a half an hour to connect with their participants in between groups. This is especially meaningful when the facilitator checks in with members that were absent to make sure that everything's all right. Um, I'll let us focus on this picture for a second because it, because it is so cute. And are there any questions that anybody has? You can just go ahead and type them at any time in the chat box and I'll answer them uh, as they come up. So all of the other people that sign up for your small group ministry, their very important role is um, to be active participants. Their role is to come as often as they're able, sharing themselves and listening deeply to others in the group. Their role is to co-create and to lift up the covenant of the group, which we'll talk about in a moment. The time commitment of your active participants will be an hour a month, or they can choose to participate more if they decide to further their connections outside of the group ministry time. And Katie asks, how many hours after the initial startup for the facilitators? It's two and a half hours. So that would be one hour for them to do, for them to be a participant in small group ministry uh, in their own group, and then another hour to actually facilitate the advisor small group ministry, and then about a half an hour a month to just check in with their advisors and go over the material. So that's two and a half hours a month. So the coordinator is gonna to want to uh, brainstorm the best way to reach out to the group to get a diversity of participants from various congregations because we're no longer limited by zip code. We can do this all online if we want to. And then perhaps you choose to get together quarterly or uh, even just annually to be able to be together face to face. So you can focus primarily on your web presence. You could do a Facebook invite or email. Um, you can also think about how you want to partner with congregations to spread the word. You can do uh, stuff in the newsletter and the order of service. You can make announcements at church. You can get your um, uh, DRE or your minister to help you find the, the people in different congregations to uh, join this small group ministry. So let me show you some resources that we have online. So to do that, I have to uh, switch. I'm going to turn off the, um, oh, you can see I'm not very good at talking and doing it at the same time. I'm gonna turn off the screen share so I can show you my browser. And I'm gonna send you this information at the end as well. So no need to copy that, um, that link right there. 
Okay, just one more moment. I'm gonna close this so that I can share my screen. Okay. And uh, Lori, can you come on the phone for just a moment so I can hear if y'all can see my screen that says Mountain Desert District Youth Ministry at the top? Looking good. All right. So here on the Mountain Desert District website, I've got a whole bunch of um, resources available for you for your small group ministry for advisors and uh, other adults in youth ministry. You've got a little list of the people that you'll want to identify, and then you've got a whole slew of resources here. There's uh, want to use a registration form. This is from last year, but it's still good. You can do a paper registration form, or you can do a survey monkey, and that's just an online um, survey tool, so you can gather information. That's that's it's just a quick way to gather people's contact information and find out what's available. And I've got an order of service announcement template here. So, I mean, it's, you don't even have to think about it. All this stuff is already here. You just have to tweak it to match um, your specific group needs. And a small group ministry handout. So that's sort of a, just a little tips and tricks page for promoting small group ministry. And a newsletter for the website um, or a newsletter or a website announcement and the flyer, and a sample covenant. So your group is going to want to come up with their own covenant, similar to uh, what youth groups do at the beginning of the year or the season. And it'll be no different with your small group ministry. Uh, so there might be different elements to it, but it's the same concept. And then here, the right before it says on the web, there's a, a blue writing that says small group ministry sessions in a zip file. If you click on that, it's 13 sessions that will download to your desktop and you can choose any one of those that you want. You can just take that as a whole year's worth of sessions and go straight through them. The theme for that packet is spiritual maturity. And there's a whole bunch of sessions on the web as well. So this complete guide to small group ministry is a wonderful little handbook that's available on the um, on the UUA bookstore website. And UUA also has an online guide to small group ministry. There's a tip sheet from Interconnections and the UU small group ministry network. I mean, it's literally thousands of small group ministry session topics on that site. And there's more small group ministry session plans. So I did a little digging. And uh, here are five are four churches that have really robust small group ministry folders online. And then there's also a book, Soul to Soul, from Skinner House Books. And that's the UUA Bookstore Connection as well. So um, you'll receive both of those web links in the uh, resources that I'll send out afterwards. And there's there it's so it's all laid out for you. And of course, you can choose to do uh, anything totally differently as well. That's the cool thing about small group ministry is it's um, so easy and wonderful to personalize it. And now I'm just going to switch my slide back to where we were. And we'll keep going on. So um, is there anyone, does anybody have any questions about the resources that I can answer before we dare to move on to our uh, experiment? All right, feel free to type them in at any time. So let's give this, this uh, virtual small group ministry thing a try. And I say, if this grandmother can do the vertical splits up a bus stop post, then we can surely experiment with a new app, don't you think? So we're going to switch over to Zoom in a second and see what it looks like to do a check-in, uh, a reading, and a short discussion together. 
And Katie says, I'm just excited to see that all, we're all gathered together in one place. This is fantastic. Oh, yes. It's, it's something that I definitely craved when I was an advisor. So it's uh, one of the first things that I wanted to do when I came into this position. So before I show you how to open Zoom, um, oh, I just did that. Sorry, I'm reading my notes. And we're already asking questions. So Zoom is an app that you download onto your desktop for video conferencing. And it only takes a couple of seconds to download and you get a free account. The only downside to the free account is that you only have 50 minutes, five zero minutes for the call and then it'll kick you off. But you can do as many calls in a row as you want. So it's just a little awkward, but you can still um, have as long of a call, it'll just be broken up. So I have a paid account, which is $10 a month, and I honestly use this every single day. I should be getting paid for this advertisement. I just love Zoom and use it every single day. So we're going to spend uh, just under 30 minutes on there tonight together. Um, actually, no, we'll be able to spend just over 30 minutes tonight together. So there are plenty of other options out there. There's Skype, which is also an app that you download. Uh, and it's free if you're if you're sending from one computer to another. You can also make calls, and it costs uh, a little bit. There's Google Hangouts, which is continually updating and continually upgrading. I find right now that if not everybody on the call has a super internet speed, then uh, it gets a little choppy, and it can be frustrating for people that are just learning how to do the uh, online stuff. So uh, and there's also any meeting which we're on today. We're in conference mode right now or in listener only mode right now, but uh, you can get a free any meeting account as well and have it in, um, I think it's conference mode where everybody can have their cameras on and everybody can uh, share their mics. There's a limited number of people that can do that. I think it's up to six connections, yep, up to six cameras, um, but it's it's still, you know, you can record your uh, meetings if you want, you can share your notes, so that's a great platform too. So let me show you a couple of features on Zoom before we switch over so that when you do switch over, you'll know what you can start playing around with as you log on. So this is a screenshot that uh, Lori and I took yesterday when we were doing um, a practice run. And this is what all of our screens are going to look like in a second. We'll have more, more cameras on, but this is the general layout. So if you, you'll have to hover your mouse when we click over to Zoom. You have to hover your mouse over that top right corner to get those little icons to show up. One is the gallery or speaker view. That's that first little one. And <laughs> Deanna says, oh, I wasn't anticipating this. <laughs> It'll be fun. Deanna, luckily, you, you're, you're a pro at this Zoom thing. Um, so the gallery view is if you want all of our cameras to be the same size. And speaker view is if you want the person who's speaking to be the biggest camera and then all the other camera, all the other um, screens will be little and you can scroll back and forth to see everybody on the call. That other teeny icon up at the top right is minimize and maximize. So if you click it once, it'll maximize and make your whole screen zoom. And if you click minimize, then it'll make the screen about the size it is now and you can, uh, you'll be able to see the rest of the apps on your desktop. So the next one is this little chat icon. It's very similar to the one that we're using right now. Um, a little orange uh, word bubble will pop up when anybody enters a chat. And if you want to be able to see the whole series of chats, you just click that little icon and it'll come up on the side of the screen so that you can uh, reply to everybody or you can reply to a specific participant. 
And you'll just have to click the, the bar at the very top where mine says Zoom meeting ID number uh, and hold it down and you'll be able to move the, the thing around. So that'll be the same with that chat. You can move the chat, um, the chat window off of the camera window. And last is that little microphone icon, very similar to what we're using here. If you um, click it and it has a little red slash through it, it means you're muted. So that's a perfect time to cough or to sneeze or to giggle with your buddies. And then if you click it again and it doesn't have the slash through it, then your mic is on. So sometimes when you have uh, a lot of computers on with a lot of different mics, there will be a little echo. The easiest way to get out of that, to get away from that echo is to just everybody mute their mics and then only the person who's talking unmutes their mic and then it doesn't get that echo. Okay, are you guys ready? I truly believe in us. I really think that you can do this. So take a moment, click, you can just click right on the screen and it'll take you to the um, Zoom website and it'll begin downloading automatically. And yes, um, and Lori is going to stay on any meeting help to help anyone who's having troubles and you can chat with her or you can email her. So we're going to stop the recording now and we're not going to record the Zoom portion tonight so that it can be a true small group ministry experience without worrying about um, it making its way to the internet. And I will meet you in Zoom.